Hi, this is Mary and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio and we're back at uh, Dying with Coach Neil. Now the last video you saw, we prepared it, we started the first bath and I remember very clearly telling you that the next time we would do a video would be two days from now because I would be able to show you the first bath of Brilliant Red and the second bath of maybe a raspberry pink or a paler pink. Well, things changed a bit. So this is actually the next day after yesterday's video. There's no second bath and the first bath is quite different than what I had anticipated. So let me, um, let me approach this video uh, from this way. Let me show you what I've done. Let me show you what I didn't do but should have. And let me show you what I couldn't do if I wanted to because it's beyond my control. Okay? Okay. First thing, cochineal without tartaric acid. All right? What I did was I dyed it at 10% weight of goods, which is what I understand is the percentage, the recommended percentage uh, for this particular cochineal bud. And so this is what I got. This is 10% without tartaric acid. They are beautiful. I really like them. These are just a, a, some of the things that I dyed. This is what I did. What I didn't do, and boy was this a rookie mistake, I haven't done this in a long time, was I didn't separate out the mordanted fibers for the first bath from the second bath and keep the second bath mordanted fibers ready for the second bath. Instead, I just put them all in the pot, which meant that I tweaked my percentage of cochineal insect. Instead of 10%, since I had almost double the amount of fiber, I'm closer to 5%, maybe 7% at the most uh, <laughs> that went into this collected pot of fibers. So it's less purple than I had anticipated. Still a nice purple. But let me show you an earlier batch where I, actually it was a different cochineal bug. I have to be honest there. <coughs> but look at this, this is full percentage. This is the second bath, which you will not see here, okay? This is an earlier batch of cochineal without tartaric acid. This is yesterday's bath. All right, so now this is without tartaric acid, okay? Let's look at it with the tartaric acid. And this is where, and I'm going to cover this up, by the way, because these are brand new out of the pot and I just don't want to expose them to this much heat uh, so early in their lives, okay? Let me tell you again what I did. I did 10% weight of goods. I added a pinch of tartaric acid every time I cooked up the uh, bug, which was three times, therefore three pinches of the, of the acid. And then I put them all in a pot, and what didn't I do? I didn't separate out my second bath fibers. They all went into the same pot, and of course that meant a lower ratio of bug to fiber. Now, here is what I wanted to get. And again, this is earlier, this is much earlier dying. But when I talk about the beautiful cochineal red, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, isn't that lovely? I would call that flag red, perhaps, what we see on our various flags. Now let me show you what I got. This is what I got. I got a red that is very much coral. Look at the difference. Huge difference. Was I a happy camper yesterday when I realized what was going on? Not happy at all. I didn't want coral. There's nothing the matter with these colors. They're very beautiful in their own way. But here I was promoting a study group of reds from cochineal and oranges from matter. And I got corals from cochineal and so I thought this isn't gonna work. So I tried it again, okay? Um, and by the way, I'm going to get to what, I, what is beyond my control in just a minute. So 10%, but too much fab fiber. Okay, so really more like 5 to 7% weight of goods. Um, and then this is what I did last night. And notice I just took them out of their pot, so they're still soaking. This is what I did. Same cochineal, 
but instead of 10% weight of goods, I did 20% of weight of goods and really backed off on the tartaric acid. I did put the acid in because if I didn't, I would have gotten a purple and I wanted red. So this is fleece. This is mohair. There's some dark mohair. This is yak silk. Kind of hard to see at this point because they're still in their dye pots, but if you look at the red I was hoping for, I got closer, okay? So what I'm suggesting is, and oh, by the way, if I had uh, anything to mordant a second, or excuse me, uh, anything to dye a second time around for a second bath, I would have probably gotten something like this. That is what the intention is. That's a second bath cochineal, okay? But it's not to be, because I used up all my fiber in the first baths. Okay, so let me cover this up for just a minute and talk for a short while about what is beyond my control. And that is the bug itself. Any dye stuff is, of course, a natural source. And we all know that flowers, uh, grapes, and dye stuffs grow differently from different regions, uh, different uh, growing conditions, different times, okay? So I'm thinking that some of the problem here had to do not with what I was doing, but with the fact that this particular cochineal has a lot of yellow in it, and therefore you're going to get warmer, yellower reds. Um, the cochineal, if you bought it from me, the cochineal that you have will lean towards the warmer redders and the warmer corals. Um, if you didn't want that, if you wanted more of a flag red, then look around Go to Dharma, go to Maiwa in Canada, Earth Hues, Aurora Silk. There are a whole bunch of sources out there for cochineal. And try your hand at another cochineal insect other than this one from Botanical Colors. Now, I like this, and I'm going to work with this. Uh, and remember, our little business, Dreamy Goat Design Studio, primarily focuses on unspun fiber that we card into bats that spinners then spin. So these corals here, although it wasn't what I wanted, this, for example, will card up beautifully with, let's say, purples, blues. I mean, we're going to get, I'm going to get some beautiful, beautiful spinnable fiber out of this. It's just not the brilliant reds that I wanted. So what is beyond my control? What's beyond my control is the dye stuff itself. And that's the wonderful, serendipitous quality of dye stuffs. My only grievance right now is a slight embarrassment of the fact that I promised reds and I pulled at least the first go round, I pulled uh, more of a yellow red, not a pure, bright, fantastic red. But I did get it by using 20% rather than 10% or 5 or 7%. Um, I would say too that if you bought your cochineal insect from me, I gave you 25% weight of goods, so you have plenty to go above and beyond the recommended 10%, which is in the PDF instructions, PDF instructions that I've given you. Anyway, that's been my <laughs> last 24 hours, kind of busy. Um, there won't be a video on second baths because, of course, I don't have any. Um, so, go for it. If you have questions, of course, uh, post your questions on the group site, and I will include lots more photos down the road of my reds. And, uh, hey, I think let's just do it and see what we get. Please post your photos as well. I wanted to show one more thing, by the way. And my videographer is pointing to this. This is what you wanted to show, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. If I had um, actually had enough fiber to do second baths, this would be my second bath for the purples. Okay. Okay. This would have been my second bath for these guys. That would have been really pale. And this would have been my second bath for these guys here, the bright, darker reds. I'm thinking I would get, um, you know, a, really, a pale pink out of that. And actually, there is one last thing I wanted to tell you. This is Habitat Silk, right? Silk doesn't dye red unless uh, you add tin to your mordantine, which is a whole different story. If you're interested, I can give you some percentages to use um, through the post, and then you can go out and find your own tin, okay? All right.
So that's it. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. Believe me, I have learned a lot, and this is truly a study group for me, too. Thank you.